Hello and welcome to today's episode of Character Critiques. Today's episode is about Ernest Jones, the nerd leader from Bully. Now before I begin this video, I just want to say that today's episode is going to be a bit different from the other episodes, as I felt I was criticising the characters' storylines more than the characters themselves. So today's episode is a lot more character-centric than my Johnny Vincent and Rudy the Red Nose Santa one. So let's begin. The first time we ever meet Ernest is in the mission The Candidate towards the end of chapter 1, where Ernest is putting up his campaign posters and gets bullied by the jocks for it. Jimmy walks by and Ernest offers to pay for his vote and then pays Jimmy to look after him during his speech. Now even though that this is the first mission with Ernest in it, we actually see quite a bit of his personality in this, and one of his defining characteristics, which is leadership, which plays a massive part to his character and sticks with him from the very beginning to the very end. We even see this in the cutscene where Ernest refers to himself as a born leader in the cutscene. Now, I'm not going to repeat what I've said about the election storyline again, because otherwise I'd just be rereading half of my script which I wrote for Ted. But in The Candidate, we can actually see Ernest takes this election very seriously, with actual policies and promises. Of course, Ted might have said some of the things for his speech, but we never find out about that. Now, Ernest's passion for leadership is also part desperation too, as we see in Complete Mayhem where he turns on Jimmy because Gary told him he had a plan to take over the school, and how Ernest's brains could actually help out with that. Even after the election, Ernest keeps his campaign posters and banners and just sticks them around the nerds hideout and the observatory, which is cementing his leadership of the nerds, which isn't actually seen in any other clique. Like Ted for example, he does keep his campaign posters, but he sticks them in the jocks clubhouse, but he doesn't stick them up in the gym or the boys locker room. The preppies and the greasers also don't have banners and posters of Darby and Johnny either. Ernest doesn't actually appear in Chapter 2, but the next time we see him is in Chapter 3, where he asks Jimmy to find Algy and rescue him from Johnny Vincent, who's gone a bit mad. Now, while Ernest does not play a massive role in this mission outside of giving it to Jimmy, it shows Ernest does actually care for his friend's safety, as do many of the other nerds, much like Algernon does in Chapter 1, where he asks Jimmy to make sure Bucky is safe from the bodies. Ernest doesn't actually have much to do with this mission outside of giving it, however, so, so we're going to have to gloss over this one for now. Ernest really does shine in Chapter 4, as he is a main character of the story behind it, and he actually appears in a large majority of the missions, and we also learn quite a lot about his character in this. For example, we learn that Ernest is the kind of person who does stuff first without thinking of the consequences for his actions afterwards, as this is a recurring theme in Chapter 4 and Chapter 5, and sets up many of the missions in Chapter 4. For example, in Stronghold Assault, rather than listen to Jimmy, he jumps straight to the conclusion that Jimmy's there just to beat him up, but because of how hasty Ernest was, and he was not going to listen to Jimmy, he ultimately ended up with his spud cannon being destroyed, and his observatory deck near enough bringing the whole observatory down too. The best example of this however, is in Mandy's Humiliation, where Ernest convinces Jimmy to get naughty photos of Mandy, including one of her in the shower. But he does not think of the consequences in the long term, which in the story end up with the jocks wanting to come and beat the living daylights out of Ernest and the nerds. Which is actually understandable and probably one of the rare times where the jocks weren't being the antagonist for the sake of being the antagonist, they just wanted revenge. We also see that Ernest might be the kind of person who refuses to take blame for his own responsibilities, as he ultimately blames Jimmy for the jocks coming to attack, despite the fact it was Fad who stuck up the posters around town and the school, and Ernest who actually requested them. Granted, Jimmy isn't exactly off the hook here, as he did take the photographs, and didn't exactly bring it up. He did refuse initially, but gave in. But the way that Ernest blames Jimmy for everything kind of strikes me as it's all your fault, not mine, and certainly not none of my friends. In fact, also, in the mission, Brats in the Library, Ernest jumps straight to blaming Jimmy before Jimmy even has a chance to open his mouth and ask what's going on. Now, one way in Ernest is a unique character is he's one of the few characters in the game who has a lot of sexual tension surrounding him. As mentioned, he actually did ask and pay Jimmy for photos of Mandy in the shower. And in the big game, Jimmy actually catches Ernest fantasising over a model in his porn. Oh, sorry, um, I made a mistake there. I mean, studying his personal history homework about hay barns and using the photos of Mandy to study human anatomy. That should be advertiser-friendly, I hope. Now, this kind of stuff isn't actually seen much in Buddy, which, to be fair, is because Buddy is rated 15, and Rockstar had to tread very carefully when dealing with this stuff, as any teenager or adult knows just how incredibly dirty or sexual people can be, and what Rockstar did may or may not have made Buddy an 18 game, or got it into serious trouble. So going off that, I think Rockstar did incredibly well to create the stereotypical hormone-ridden teenage male without overstepping the boundary or making it feel forced. After all, the Mandy stuff did actually help set the tone for a minor storyline, and Candy from Ohio is a great throwaway joke. I also want to add that the Mandy storyline actually made Ernest hated within the community, with many viewing him as a creep, as seen here by the opinions page on the Bully Fan on Wiki. As it says here, Ernest, creep by Tweety McBird Bird. He is very weird and very creepy, I don't like him, by TTG. 
My number one most hated character in this entire game. It's pretty hard to beat Algy, but he beats him by a landslide. He's the most vile and disgusting piece of dirt in the entire game. By, um, somebody's IP address, which I can't say. Gross, says Soda Cat. He's intelligent, but weird and a coward, and his dirty mind makes me hate him as well as laugh at him. And lastly, probably the best opinion on this entire page, simply put, pervert, says a fandom user. Because of this, Ernest is one of the few side characters who is universally disliked within the community. So considering that these kind of opinions take up most of Ernest's page on the Bully Fanon wiki, it's safe to say that a large majority of the fandom just do not like him. Because, as the other said, he's a creep, which you can't really disagree with. One thing that always struck me as odd with Ernest is how he acts in his boss battle. Like everybody else's boss battle was them trying to beat Jimmy up to teach him a lesson. And on a basic level, Ernest's battle is no different. However, unlike everybody else, Ernest is yelling about developing nuclear bombs and how everybody will be sorry, and stuff along the lines of why can't we all just get along. And honestly, this felt a lot more serious than any other battle in the game. Like, Buddy is known for his childish humour and satirical views of high school life with stereotypes running amok, but Ernest's battle is just strange. Like, it's not funny. Even though that is only a video game, if somebody at any school was laughing like a maniac and going on about how everybody would be sorry and talking about developing nuclear bombs, I'm almost certain there's a massive red flag there that they're not right at all and need some kind of intervention before something bad actually happens. And the thing with this is this behaviour is not seen again. This behaviour is not shown by Ernest or anybody else ever again, which makes it stick out like a sore thumb even more. Now as this is a character critique, I'll say that this is almost due to some kind of mental issue or maybe some traumatic experience. If I had to guess, I'd say that Ernest may have been bullied incredibly badly considering how he goes off on about friends getting along together and carrying away of a whimper when Jimmy brings him down. But from a design view, I'd honestly say that this is part of a leftover of what Bully's theme was originally. Like, if you followed Beta Bully or know info about it, then you may know that Bully was going to be a much darker game, being much more sexual and much more violent. And I'd honestly say that Ernest's behaviour in this mission, and Happy Vault's Asylum itself, I'll add, could be a small sneak peek of what Bully was originally meant to be like with a much darker theme, before it was changed in 2006. Very similar to Johnny Vincent, Ernest actually appears frequently throughout the story as opposed to only appearing in his boss battle and complete mayhem like Ted Thompson and Darby Harrington do, as Ernest appears in every chapter except chapter 2. Now this is a nice touch as it shows Ernest isn't shoved into the story because the plot needs some nerd leader to come and take Jimmy down. Now one small detail some of you may have missed is in the nerd clubhouse. If Jimmy beats nerd challenge in chapter 3, and yes I know it's there all game, but the earliest you can see it is in chapter 3, we can actually see a blueprint of a mascot costume and a drinks cooler, which is obviously the plan for the big game. Now even though we never see Ernest in here, it's incredibly likely that Ernest and the nerds have been planning this since Christmas. It's a nice bit of detail Rockstar put in, however I'll say that the ending to chapter 4 was a bit empty, from the nerd side of course, as the plot for chapter 4 was Jimmy and the nerds teaming up to take down the jocks, and throughout the chapter, and pretty much every single mission, the nerds appear in there. But after Jimmy beats Ted, we don't see Ernest or any of the nerds celebrating. Instead, we get Pete, who didn't do anything in this mission except get pushed over and get rejected by Algy. You'd think Ernest would have taken his place, because, like, you know, Ernest wanted to take down the jocks pretty much just as much as Jimmy did. But, like I said, Pete didn't actually do anything in this mission. I mean, yeah, he's Jimmy's friend, but Pete isn't really the kind of person you expect to sort of be celebrating something like that. Now overall, I think part of the reason why Ernest is one of the more fleshed out characters in Buddy is because he's one of the first characters to actually be created for the game, going as far back to the concept artwork when Buddy was in its more cartoony, exaggerated and possibly darker theme. So it shows that Rockstar had more time to work with his character and what to do with him. It could also explain why Algernon is one of the only clique members to actually play a role in the story too, the other being Lola. So overall, I believe Ernest is one of the best characters in Buddy because Rockstar managed to use him right. He wasn't forced into the plot, he was well fleshed out, and he actually appeared frequently throughout the story. And Rockstar also made him purposely unlikable to many, which is something I felt Buddy lacked compared to games like Grand Theft Auto where characters like Steve Haynes, Dimitri Raskoloff, Officer Tenpenny, Devin Weston were purposely made to be hated by the player. But practically every character in Buddy is liked, or at least has their own dedicated fanbase. One difference here is that the characters I just mentioned were all antagonists, while Ernest is a friend to Jimmy throughout most of the story. So that's it for today's episode of Character Critiques, my next episode will be on John Marston from Red Dead Redemption, and I know some of you might not be interested in that as much, as I am a bully channel, but I did say that I wanted this series to be about Rockstar characters in general, from all of their games, Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, Bully and more, etc. Plus I'm also still excited for Red Dead Redemption 2, and it may also provide a small breath of fresh air to those of you who want me to do something non-bully for the second time in an eternity. 
So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and have a nice day.